All right, so what is Gilbert syndrome? What is Craigland and Jaws syndrome? Dubin Johnson syndrome? And what is Rhoda syndrome? Let's move on straight away. But before we start, we would have to know the normal levels of bilirubin. So when we take conjugated bilirubin, the normal levels are between 0 to 0 0.4 milligrams per deal. That's the normal level for conjugated bilirubin. And the normal levels for unconjugated bilirubin is 0 0.2 to 1.2 milligrams per deal. Now, here's a mnemonic that's going to help you know that, oh, this type of syndrome is under conjugated or under unconjugated. So we have, you can go dissect DR. So the U will stand for unconjugated bilirubin. And CAN, the C in CAN, will stand for the krigler najjar syndrome. The GO, the G for the GO, is going to stand for Gilbert syndrome. We have the D for the dissect, is going to stand for direct bilirubin. And then the DR, the D will stand for Dubin Johnson syndrome, and the R will stand for Rhoda syndrome. So what does this mnemonic mean? It means that when you take the you can go, the first three leading alphabets are in one group. So when we take high levels of unconjugated bilirubin, we have C and G under them. And the C we know it stands for krigler najjar syndrome. We talk about them in just a moment. And then the G will stand for Gilbert syndrome. That is to say, krigler najjar syndrome and Gilbert syndrome are both as a result of high levels of unconjugated bilirubin. Now, when you take the high levels of conjugated bilirubin levels, that's where we have the Dubin Johnson syndrome and the Rhoda syndrome. So what then is krigler najjar syndrome? First of all, krigler najjar syndrome is autosomal recessive, and it happens as a result of absent UGT. So here we have unconjugated bilirubin levels about more than 20 milligrams per deal. And there are two types of krigler najjar syndrome. We have the type 1 and the type 2, with the type 1 being total absence of the UDP glucuronyl transferase. That is to say there's total absence of UGT. And with the type 2, there's a partial deficiency of the UGT. And therefore, patients with the krigler najjar syndrome may present with connectors. Here with connectors, we have bilirubin moving from the bloodstream into the brain tissue. Treatment plan for krigler najjar syndrome can include phototherapy, exchange blood transfusion or dialysis, giving of barbitrates, and these barbitrates are going to increase the UGT synthesis to relieve symptoms. Or in other cases, liver transplantation is preferred. Still on high levels of unconjugated bilirubin levels, we talk about Gilbert syndrome, and Gilbert syndrome happens to be autosomal dominant. And here there's a mutation in the UGT1A1 gene. And when it happens like that, you have less or immature UGT levels. And this is going to lead to high levels of unconjugated bilirubin. Now, most of the time, patients with Gilbert syndrome usually are asymptomatic. And they usually present after a stress event. Like, let's say they can give you a condition whereby a patient presents with high levels of unconjugated bilirubin and they are just from a hiking event. Maybe they're just from any stressful event and symptoms just began, you get it. So in a nutshell, with Gilbert syndrome, there's actually a defective uptake of bilirubin by the liver. And therefore the patients are going to present with lowering of the skin. And there's actually no specific prescriptions for patients with Gilbert syndrome. Now let's move on to the Dubin Johnson syndrome. The Dubin Johnson syndrome happens to be autosomal recessive. And here there's a mutation in the gene that code for the MOAT protein. So here, you have to remember that in the Johnson syndrome, it is under high levels of conjugated bilirubin. And what happens here is that it's unexcretable conjugated bilirubin into bowel. And therefore, the patient is going to present with high conjugated bilirubin levels. So here, what you see on the gross appearance of the liver is a dark liver jaundice. Yeah. Now, with Dubin's Johnson syndrome, there's also no specific prescriptions that you give to the patient. However, there are also certain contraindications to Dubin's Johnson syndrome. Some of the contraindications include pregnancy, 
oral contraceptive use so you should advise the patient against that last one is of course the rotor syndrome and here with the rotor syndrome it is also autosomal recessive so we have the dobbins johnson and the rotor syndrome both being autosomal recessive however the rotor syndrome kind of happens to be a mild form of dobbins johnson so here there is a mild unexcretable bilirubin and also there is no specific prescriptions to rotor syndrome patients so the key what we need to know over here is that with the johnson and rotor they are under high levels of conjugated bilirubin and the johnson as the name implies d so we say d for duck there is a duck liver jaundice and rotor is as a result of a mild unexcretable bilirubin